you hope to get out of today? Sitting here, what do I have you for? 75 minutes? That's a long time just listening to some guy talk. Right? Yeah, it is, right? What do you hope to get out of today? Awesome. What else? Yeah. Just to get through the day. Just, you know, that. <laughs> <laughs> How we manage our energy, and sometimes it's just about getting through the day. Come on, turn it off. Have some fun, yeah. What else? Let's hear something. What do you want to get out of today? Out of class. <laughs> that's a good answer. So that's the kind of student I was. So be careful. Be careful. I believe I would have been something much greater than I am today if I got into class a little more. I love class. It's fantastic. But getting out of it is even more. Fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's hear some more. What do you want out of today? Yeah. Inspiration. Love it. All right. Let's inspire one another. Let's inspire one another. A few more. What do you want out of today? I want to know what I need to deliver here. I know what I wrote, but you're in front of me right now. I want to be authentic with you all, and I want to give you what you need today. Yeah. I want to be thinking about it after. I love that. So I'm going to give you tons of resources. I hope what it feels like is I'm making a drink out of a fire hose today. Too much. Too much to consume. I hope I overwhelm you in a way, but just take what you can from it and move forward. I'm going to you lots of resources today. Um, no shame, no guilt. Who got a chance to do the BIA survey? I know some of you may have, some of you may have not. Okay, less than, less than 20%, maybe. Or less than that. I'm not good with numbers, I wasn't a math student. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to encourage you all to go back to that, perhaps. It's one way to think about it past today. Uh, I made today work so whether you took the survey or not, okay? So we'll be able to interact with those values today um, anyway. My clicker's not working, so I'm going to go back and forth to my actual laptop here. I want to share kind of three guidelines <clears throat> and open it up for your ideas on how we can work together today. I don't like rules. So I'm not calling them the rules of today or the, our, our, uh, how we're going to engage. I like to think of it as guidelines. Safe space, physically and psychologically safe. How does that feel to everybody? Right? That's not my responsibility. That's our responsibility. All right, so what do I mean by psychological safety? Anybody have something to say? They have an idea? Right? We're going to encourage that. Or at least we're going to listen. And if we disagree, we can ask clarifying questions. How's that sound? Can we do that to keep it psychologically safe? Yeah, awesome. Say so respect for all involved. I think that first piece speaks about respect, but how else would you all define respect? Let's hear what respect means to you. Yeah? Um, basically, I go by this one rule called three people out of the one. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Does anyone know what the platinum rule is? Platinum is just a little bit more valuable than gold. The platinum rule is treat others as they would like to be treated. So to do that, we've got to connect. We've got to get to know one another. We're going to rely on our emotional and social intelligence to do that together. The platinum rule is treat others as they would like to be treated. Okay. High levels of respect. I think we all want respect. Yes? Can I get thumbs up in the air? Yes? All right, awesome. No psychopaths here, that's good. All right, participate. You're already doing it. Ask questions. Share your perspectives. And I respect if you participate at a quieter, more introverted way, learn and grow. It's another way to participate. What would you want to add to the list of our rules and engagement or our guidelines to help work together? What do you want to add? Or you can tell me this is, this is great. It can work. You have any ideas? Awesome. Questions yet? I gotta find the bearings. <laughs> Just a little bit about my organization. Uh, we focus on the development of the whole person. While I said we focus on leaders, it's really a holistic development process. So I can tell you right now, from the corporate setting, I say the word holistic, all of a sudden I think I'm weird. 
weird and some sort of hippie or something, right? But I get to that part of the language later in the corporate world, and we actually start talking about the things we're going to talk about today, meaning your spirituality. Why do you care? Why do you get up in the morning? What's important to you? Right? That's a whole person. We believe in four intelligences. Emotion, emotional, social, which we're going to focus on today. Cognitive, right? Like the brain power stuff. Your technical abilities, your thinking power. Right? Spiritual, the meaning behind it. I don't necessarily mean going to church or God or anything like that. You can believe anything in that space. But really, it's the meaning behind it for you. And then physical, we've got to take care of this thing. Right? If this thing breaks down, this body, this physical presence we have, we can't leave, we can't work, we can't do our thing. So it's the holistic person, all four of those areas. I'd like you thinking about those four as we share information today together. Our mission is dedicated to raising the consciousness of leaders and organizations so that everyone can realize their full potential and maximizing their contribution to the organizations they serve. You serve all types of organizations, right? the school, your sports teams, your families, your community. Right? Let's really expand the definition of organizations today. Great book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name several books that you might want to check out, you might want to read, or if you're actually got confession. I've been seeing most of them on Audible, to be really honest with you. Windshield Time, it's really great just to be able to listen to a book sometimes. Mowing the lawn, snow blowing the driveway, you can listen instead of read. The biggest lever for change is not a change in self belief. I don't want to change anyone's belief system here. It's too heavy a lift, and it tends to not work very well. You don't have to worry about changing yourself that way. Why do I mention that? Some people enter this kind of work with some barriers or some resistance. Right? A little bit like, well, I know myself. Status quo is okay. I'm pretty cool. Yeah, you are. But to really make a shift, you've got to be willing to have an outward mindset. But a fundamental change in the way one sees and regards one's connections with and obligations to others. We're willing to challenge the way we relate to self and others. I'll tell you what, I think the life expectancy right now for a male is 73, I think females are something like 75 or something, right? That's not enough time to get this right. <laughs> not enough time. We can practice this day in and day out and not get it perfect. That's okay. We'll keep nudging it forward. Let's keep relating with self and others better. And that's one of the purposes of today. Questions so far? <coughs> Any questions? Thoughts? Don't be shy. So the rules around Zoom, which I'm so thankful not to be on today because it's been my life the last two and a half years <laughs> when I work through Zoom. Um, just wait seven seconds and answer questions and move on. But I'd like to pause, take some strategic pauses. I want to give you that idea of strategic pauses. Slowing yourself down strategically to be more present in that moment. And be thinking about the second or third thought that comes to your mind, not just the first. The first thought is almost always reactionary. So I want to take a strategic pause, practice one right now, with what's coming up for you with what I've shared so far, if there are any questions. If we think I can achieve to be a better person today than I was yesterday, 
right? How does that feel? Does that feel more worth it? If I borrow a tool from a neighbor and I get a little dirty and maybe I dull the blade or something, what if I returned it in better shape than I borrowed? How would my neighbor feel about that? I sharpened the blade and cleaned it up. Appreciative. Yeah. So what if we just left things a little better than we found them? And not worry about perfection. It's still a used tool, right? Tomorrow's another opportunity. Today's better than yesterday. How's that feel for that? Is it reasonable? Yeah. Appreciate that. Other questions, thoughts? Yeah. So your whole goal is like make people like better people, right? Kinda. Yeah, I'll go with that. So have you like has that always been your mission or is there like something or someone that's inspired you like Oh I love that question. I love that question. Um, uh, you're gonna give me the tear up. My mom inspired me. Yeah. Um, when I think about people in my life, I've, I've got a long list of folks that inspired me in that space. But I'd say, you know, I really first started with my mom. Uh, my mom was a female attorney, first partner in her firm. You know, um, she was kind of a trailblazer that way. Crazy smart and very emotionally available at the same time. Some people think it's like one or the other. They go, oh, he's really just a people person. But you think about the technical abilities, you know, that's all BS. I won't swear at you guys when I use initials, okay? <laughs> that's a bunch of BS. You can have it all. And so people that do that really inspire me. Um, but I think I've always been kind of in this direction, to be honest with you. To be really honest with you. Appreciate the question. Yeah? So how did you get to where you are? Like, you talk to people about being better people for a living. I do, I do. Some people say I sell air. Because right? all I'm doing is talk. Yeah. 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 How did I get where I am? Yeah, like where did you start? Yeah, awesome. I'm happy to share that story. Um, so I, uh, I, was, I, was a, I was a nerdy little art student in middle school and high school. Loved art, enjoyed the sciences. I'm gonna, this is like total blasphemy for the space I'm in. I really didn't like school. I really didn't. I wasn't a great student. I didn't enjoy studying. Uh, unlike Skinny Atlas, I didn't have the best teachers really around me. I had one awesome teacher, and she was the art teacher, right? And she became this mentor for me. And so I spent every last minute I could get in the school day in the art room, and uh, had a really great conversation. She said, "Bill, you're not ready to go to college, are you?" I said, "Not." This was senior year. I'm like, I'm just, I'm not. I don't see myself doing that. I'm just going to enter the workforce. I don't know what I'm going to do. She said, "Well." There's this really cool little company that's not too far from here, and you've been using their products in our art room for the last four years. The company's Golden Artist Colors. I don't know if anybody knows it. It's down in New Berlin, New York. They manufacture artist materials. And she said, uh, my art teacher, Mrs. Walling, said, you know, why don't you go introduce yourself? Maybe there's a job for you. So I did that. I followed her lead. It was an amazing organization. I was so lucky, so blessed to get into that organization because they invested in me and my growth. So another person I would add to that list was the CEO of that organization, who, while he was running a business, what he was really running was an organization that gave opportunity for people to reach their potential. That was his personal mission. We just happened to be making the best art materials in the world. All right, so I got in a shipping job, put in for promotions along the way, actually got my two degrees while working there, became the HR director. I stayed there for about 27 years. Went and got my coaching certification as just another tool to have in my toolbox and kind of had an oh crap moment. Here's this amazing organization I'm working with. I've had amazing jobs and careers there. But with the coaching, I felt like I found my calling. That might sound corny to some of you. And you know what, back then it would sound corny to me too. But I firmly believe there are jobs, careers, and callings. And to find your calling in life is huge. And so I was the only wage earner in my family. I had a three-year-old baby at home. I had an amazing job that paid really well, awesome benefits that I was at for, at that point, almost 28 years. And I said, I'm going to leave and start my coaching business. So I jumped out of a perfectly good airplane for no other reason than thinking I found my call. Um, that's how I got here. That's my story. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little crazy. You find out who your friends are, who your support is, and who isn't, right? The folks are like, yes, do this. At any moment, like you're doubting yourself, they're kicking in the butt, right? Like, you gotta do it. 
The folks that are saying, oh man, you're crazy, that's so scary. Like, what, like aren't you worried about your fine? Of course you're worried about all that stuff. We're gonna, I'm gonna, obviously the goal today is to have some results. And I, I'll come back to this, I promise. But I really want to talk about, um, shoot, where was it going here? Two types of energy. This really relates to the story. Um, I know that in the, in mostly in the science world, we're taught to think about positive and negative energies, right? That, that's really familiar with you, right? You think of positive people, negative people. I'm going to really ask you to reframe that today. I'm going to ask you to practice reframing that from this point forward, because it actually isn't serving us that well. There are no positive or negative people. There is no positive or negative energy. It's catabolic or anabolic. Positive or negative is a judgment. And it stops our processing. Catabolic and anabolic. I'm borrowing those terms from biology. What's an anabolic steroid, guys? What is it? Someone said something. What's an anabolic steroid? Uh, no. Come on. Where are my biology makers? Oh, where's my AP bio kids? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> where's my biology? Anabolic. What does it do? Why is it against most sports? It strengthens you. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. It builds, right. It couples, it builds, right? Uh, in an unhealthy way, that's why, you know, to answer the, the question why it's not a lot of sports, it gives an unfair advantage, it's unhealthy, right? But the anabolic part of the definition here is building, coupling, charging. Catabolic is the opposite, draining, decoupling. I want to start thinking about people, ourselves, and our energy in these terms instead of positive or negative. Because the same exact energy can be positive or negative. So we're going to get more into detail of that. It's whether you want it to be catabolic or anabolic. Do you want to be drained right now or do you want to get something built up? So we're going to get to this place of really reframing this a little later. But I wanted to share that. Friends and family around my decision, I quickly saw who was catabolic and who was anabolic. Who was going to support, who was really going to be my support group in that. And who were just draining? Who was adding to the oh the fear factor of it? And what if you don't what if you don't do well in your business? What if you, uh, you know, can't afford to feed your family? Right, really catabolic. I'm sorry to think of these things. Come on, I'm semi-reasonable, you know. <coughs> All right, let's jump back to where I was. Is it this here? Yeah. All right. So our goal today is to have some level of results. Some level of results. Right? And I, I love, I love the link array. 110%. What does that mean for you folks? What is behind the link array? I want to hear it from you. Above and beyond. Above and beyond. Awesome. What else? Yeah. Uh, I mean, every single day that you walk in this building, or even when you're home, you know in your heart and in your mind that you're a linker. That means that no matter what you do, task, or objective, you're going to put 110%. Your mindset and your physical that is awesome. <laughs> there is identity in that. You're always a Laker, I heard, right? Yeah, always a Laker. There's identity in that. There's belonging in that. That's open to everyone here, isn't it? There's no exclusions. Amazing belonging in that. I heard above and beyond. There's accomplishments in it. I am sure you guys are already 110%. I'm sure. But I'm going to share, I think, some keys with you today that will let you do this even more efficiently and effectively. By really looking at your own values as your personalized, authentic keys to the Laker way, to giving 110%, to doing above and beyond, to bringing your best every day. Look, I just, actually, I talked to a leader <laughs> this morning, totally unplanned, um, coaching some of his folks, and he had a really difficult time with uh, one of his leaders in his organization. He kind of needed a quick call this morning, so I did it out in the parking lot here. And, uh, you know, he was sharing this, this idea that he doesn't always bring his A game. And this is the top guy in his organization. He doesn't always bring his A game. He's willing to see that. That some days he's bringing 95% or 90%. Some days he might be at the 80% percentile. But he doesn't stop there. You know, back, back to this young man's question. 
he works to make, that's, if that's his experience in the morning, he works to make his afternoon back to 100 or 110%. Or the next day. Right? He doesn't stay there. Is the key piece. I want to share some keys um, with all of you today to keep achieving the 110%. Or maybe beyond. They're just numbers. We can do 112% again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. The process is mastery orientation. That's continual development. Um, any martial artists here? Karate, Taekwondo. Is there? And you're just not? Really not? Yeah? Yeah. I'm just fencing. What's a kata? Do you know what a kata is? You're not a martial artist, or you are? He said that. He said fencing. Fencing. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I don't know if they do those in fencing. Does anyone know what a kata is? It's a series. Yes. It's very disciplined. Yeah, discipline is attached there. Beautiful. It's a series of disciplined movements or exercises that are continually practiced, continually developed. So it becomes muscle memory. So you don't have to think about the next move in that art form. That's why the black belt dude is there, right? Or uh, maybe it's a woman. Those hands look like that. The process is master orientation. To get to the place where we can master it. We might not, but to get to that place where we can master it. We do that through continual improvement. We do that by continuing a willingness to learn, grow, and adjust. What's that chart? The periodic table, the elements. Yeah, what's it for? Well, I don't know. Either. There are there are a lot of things the periodic table can tell you. Yeah. Like it can tell you the mass of every element for one mole of an element, and what's can, an element? Uh, the building block of everything around us. Yes. What were you gonna add? I was just gonna say that I was just like it makes it's you know, yeah. The reason I have the periodic table of elements in front of you is because you have an understanding of that from chemistry, from science, right? That it is the building blocks of everything around us. Our values are the building blocks of our thoughts and behaviors. Our values are the building blocks of our thoughts and our behaviors. It's the elements of how we're thinking right now. Whatever you're thinking. This is interesting, this is cool. How much longer do this guy stop talking? Whatever you're thinking comes back into your values. Yeah. What's an example of a value? Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, so the model I shared with you through the survey, and if you haven't had a chance to check it out, it's free, it's online. Um, oh, a few things not to trust me with, okay, guys? I'm terrible with timelines. Like, I think this has been around about 35 years, but I'm not sure. But do your research. I know it's got a ton of validity, but I think it's been around about 35, 40 years. It's a continual research program by a group called VIA, which stands for Values in Action. And the reason they supply a free survey out there in the world is because you're pledging to be a blind data appointment and continue research. So basically, they want all the data they can get, right? So they give you the survey for free, which is pretty cool. You can click all the things saying you don't want their emails and their stuff. Like they're, they're cool, but they won't bug you. Or you can click and say yes, and there'll be some interesting things coming to you. <clears throat> this particular model, there's lots of ways to define values. But this particular model is why, why I share it with you, is because there's a lot of research and science behind it. It also provides a way to look at it as a student, or a youth, or as an adult. Same 24 values. Same inventory of values, they call it. Whether you're a student or an adult, the survey is it. If the survey asks questions um, that are more approachable or relative to younger folks as compared to being an adult. Okay? But you end up with the same uh, endpoint using these 24 character strengths. Let me read these to you, because I can, you're probably not able to read it back there. You guys probably have better eyes than I do. Yeah, can't read it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start, I'm going to go row by row, okay? So these, these are the VIA values in action, inventory of values. The first one is appreciation of beauty and excellence. These just are in alphabetical order. 
no importance, okay? Appreciation of beauty and excellence, bravery, creativity, curiosity, fairness, forgiveness. Second row, gratitude, honesty, hope, humility, humor, and judgment. Third row, kindness, leadership, love, love of learning, perseverance, perspective, and the last row, prudence, self-control, sense of meaning, social intelligence, teamwork, and finally zest. You take the survey, the results are a report rank order of most significant to you to least significant. It'll rank order them by the way you answer the questions. The way I think about it is what to focus on and what not to worry about. Has anyone here ever gotten a not so great grade on their report card? Yeah, yeah me too. All right, I'll <laughs> And I don't, I don't want to out anybody's parenting skills or anything here. It's dangerous. You bring home that bad grade, what happens? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. What's, the, what's their intention? The intention is to try and make over your life. That's kind of that great. Yeah, and that's important, right? Does anyone's mom or dad focus on the other grades that might be pretty good on that report card along with the ones that aren't so great? Yeah? Yeah, what happens there for you? They're like kind of proud of me a lot of times. Yeah. But also like they seem to do better than they did not well. They don't care. It's an anabolic example of what you're able to do. Instead of focusing too much on the catabolic example of the something closer to an F than an A. Right? Or I don't know how you break here. Right? But why do we do that? It's really natural, it's really normal. Yeah. So you don't do it again or do it again. Go deeper. They absolutely want to shape your behavior. Yeah. Totally true, right? Go deeper. Why do they do it? They don't do it again. Okay. They care? Yeah, yeah. Deeper, good. What do you have? Yeah, they want more for you? Uh, does anybody realize their parents are full of fear? Yeah, they're afraid. They're afraid. My son brings home that, my son's a math kid. I don't know where he came from. My wife and I are not math people. And he's a little math genius, right? Um, but the English language, the ELA, not so great at, which actually my wife and I are fairly good at. So it's like, where did this kid come from, right? And he gets those really low ELA scores. And I'm afraid for him. I'm afraid he's not going to have the skills he needs to move forward, right? There are two motives, there are only two human motivations, fear and love. So I'm in a corporate setting, it's approach and avoid. If you love something, you approach it, if you're afraid of something, you avoid it, right? So we put that lower grade under the scrutiny of our fear and we focus there. I'm suggesting we flip that. I'm suggesting take this assessment, don't worry about anything below the fifth value and lower. Don't focus on it. They're not your keys. They're not your elements. If we go back to the elemental table, the table of periodic elements, right? They're just not yours. It's not what you're made of. It doesn't mean you can't do some of those things. It doesn't mean completely say, wait, don't focus on them. Focus on your top five. Focus on your top three. And I guarantee you're going to bring your 100 to 110%. My top three are creativity, Appreciation for beauty and perspective. Maybe it shows up. You know how much I prepare for a presentation like this? Yeah, that much. I want to be totally present. I want to be creative in the moment. I want to meet you all where you're at. I want to connect. I want to appreciate what we're doing. If I get all balled up in organization and prudence, and that's cool if that's you. Use it. It's not me. So if I put a lot of focus towards, oh, I've got to be more of that, I wouldn't be able to show up no more. So I really strongly encourage you to take this assessment just to learn more about yourself, just another tool to learn more about yourself. That's, that's, it. that's, it. that's really the, the bottom line of that. So if, uh, questions 
That was where I went to ballot. Yes, sir. So what about if like, you want to be better at something that you're not good at? Yeah. Do you have an example? I know it's um, vulnerable to say. The person can say, I found myself like all of this and the question that I'd say very much unlikely, but like, I wish it was. Love it. Love the question. Perseverance is low for me, too. Bill, can you repeat what he said? Oh, he sure. So this young man's question was, so what if there is a value that's kind of lower on your list, but you want to do better at it? It's a brilliant question. It's a brilliant question. Look to your top three or five values and say, how about I use one of those to leverage that? So let me give you my example. Creativity is my number one value. I've taken this assessment 10 times over the last 15 years. My top six never changed. My fifth and sixth one oscillate sometimes. My top six never changed. Creativity is always my number one. If I want more perseverance, I have to think, how will I be really creative in creating perseverance in this task that I'm doing? I might do a little research, but I won't subscribe to other people's ways of doing it properly. I'll find some combination, because I want to be creative about it. So leverage your top three to five values for that lower value. Let me tell you, my bottom value is the um, uh, spirituality value, which is a little, it's different here. Um, how is it framed here? My gratitude is high. Uh, my sense of meaning. So the language is a little different for the youth. Um, in the adult one, it's called spirituality. Here it's, um, here it's meaning, sense of meaning. It's actually my bottom one. But when I tap into my top value of creativity to look at the meaning, I all of a sudden get the meaning. It's there for me. If I'm allowed to be creative about it. Does that answer your question? Other thoughts or questions here before we move on? Yeah. What if you're just like at a really, like you don't feel quite like yourself and you take your quiz like that? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good question. So maybe set yourself up for when you are feeling more like yourself, right? Set yourself up for success to begin with. Um, you can retake it. Like I shared, I've taken it like maybe 10 times, 8 times in the last 15 years. You can absolutely retake it, see what comes up. Might be validating. You might have some self-perspective in that moment that says, I don't really feel like this is right. Take it again in another week or two or months down the road. Comes back similar. That might be something to really think about, right? It might be something to reflect on and say, well, even though I wasn't, I was sensing I wasn't feeling like myself in that first time, maybe there is something here for me. I use this in a lot of my coaching work with leaders, right? I had a leader who um, love came up as the first value for her. And she was absolutely like confronted by that. She's like, how can you tell me love is my first value? Okay. I'm a, she, she was a CEO of the organization, she was a real go-getter. She saw herself as something other than love. So maybe like our third coaching session together. I said, so do you recognize that you start almost every sentence with, like, I love this, I love that? She didn't recognize she was using it in her language. She didn't see it for herself. So we had blind spots, right? We had blind spots. We all do. It's really normal that we have blind spots. That's one of the reasons I want us all to relate better. Because we can share blind spots more carefully with one another and make one another better if we do that. But her blind spot was, well, if I'm, my number one element is love, how am I going to have those really hard conversations if I have to fire someone? How do I go after my competition like I want them dead, she would say. <laughs> like, I, I just want to, you know, that's how competitive she was. She could totally bring love to that. She could bring love to that competition and be compassionate. She can have an amazing conversation with someone she has to let go from her organization and preserve their human dignity. Right? Turn her world around. Yes. So watch our blind spots. Other questions about values? We're going to keep going here. I want to make sure I capture everything you guys are thinking. <clears throat> Alright, so if you have or haven't, um, I'm going to ask you to select three values that stand out as important to you from that list. Like right now, I'm going to reread them to you. You might have your list with you if you were able to take the survey. Cool, look at those. I'm going to reread these to you. I want you to take a kind of mental inventory of which three. I'm just going to actually choose three that just sound most important to you at this point. Right? You're going to do a little self-evaluation here. Appreciation of beauty and excellence. Right? That means you love things like really perfect, really good, 
Beauty can be defined in so many different ways. Like that landscape, that sunset was, was absolutely gorgeous. I love the way this, I love, I love the way this Apple phone is put together and designed and this is just like, this is beautiful to me, right? Beauty can, I the beholder, you define beauty. Beauty and excellence is important to you. Bravery, I think we all understand what bravery is, right? Yeah, that one's pretty clear. Creativity, right? Looking for other ways of doing things, not necessarily following the prescribed way or the, the rules completely, right? Looking for unique combinations, unique processes, unique ways of doing things, creativity. Curiosity, I think you know what that is, right? Being curious. Fairness, I think we all have a pretty good idea of what that might look like, whether it's equitable, or whether it's you know, fair treatment. Forgiveness, probably know what that looks like. Ask me to choose three of these, so keep mental inventory. Gratitude. It's both knowing it and expressing it in this model. So you can say, you know, thanks for that, I really appreciate what you just did. Right? That kind of gratitude. Really grateful that we have this opportunity together. That kind of gratitude. Honesty, I think we all know what that looks like. Hope, I think we all know what the force of hope looks like. Pause me or stop me if you want a further definition of any of these for you. Uh, humility, right, being humble. I tell you, there's a short of that social media. Sorry, I promised myself I wouldn't get on a social media platform with you guys today, but right, like there's a lot of lack of humbleness out there, right? <laughs> Um, humor, judgment, judgment in this case is the ability to make decisions. I suck at that. That's like my second bottom one. Like I'm just not good with judgment. My wife says, "What do you want for dinner?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> Seriously, Seriously. I'm not good at decision making. It's that bad. <clears throat> um, kindness, leadership. We defined that earlier together. Love. Love of learning, perseverance, heard that from a few of you. Perspective, seeing things from a different angle. Reframing things. Prudence, it's measured, composed, careful and thoughtful in that space. Maybe a little conservative. Self-control. I'm not so good at that one either. Uh, sense of meaning. Social intelligence. The ability to tune into other people's sensibilities and feelings. And then use that in a relationship effectively. Social intelligence. <coughs> I gotta get close to this read it, sorry guys. Teamwork, right? Working collaboratively with others towards a goal. And zest, right? That kind of energy, that kind of uh, enthusiasm, right? That zest. As I went through that list, I want you to pick three for yourself that feels important or significant. <clears throat> From there, your values or your elements, right? What would you like to do better? Put it into context. The theory and the model is great academically. Let's apply it. Let's put it in application. First, think about something you want to do better. Uh, this young man talked about perseverance, right? Great. The perseverance in what? Can I ask? Uh, getting my schoolwork. Getting your schoolwork done on time. Yes, yes. There's the context, right? Perseverance in getting his schoolwork on time. Right? Reflect on your values. What are your top three? How can you utilize them more? You come up with blanks on that last one. Talk with someone else. About it. Someone you trust. Hey, I believe these top three values I hold deeply. I really want to do better in my schoolwork with my deadlines. Um, I'm kind of at a loss still. What would you advise me to do? Great opportunity to relate with someone else. If you're coming up blank. <clears throat> I encourage you to take the assessment again if you haven't. If you have and you're sitting in front of your... Does anyone have their... List with them that they'd be willing to share? Yeah? You do, Ethan? Yeah. Yeah. What are your top three? Um, you don't learn? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was like love of learning, humor, and perseverance. Awesome. What's something you want to do better? Uh, I, mean, 
Yeah. It's more specific, yeah. 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 Pick something for me. Your Harvard judgment, too, huh? <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, tennis. I'm sorry, tennis. Yeah, you're starting tennis, yes. Yeah. And so you want to be better at that. Yeah. yeah. What were your three top options? Uh, humor, love of learning, and perseverance. How are you going to get better at tennis using those three values? Um, well, I love to learn, so I'll enjoy like learning how to become better. Already, right? Your new eyes, new beginning. Cool. I'll persevere through setbacks, and if I mess up, I can learn. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Those will be your keys, all right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna be at the Wimbledon in like five years. So. <laughs> You'll get better and better. You'll get better and better. Does anyone else have a list that they want to do yet? Yeah, yeah, your top three. Awesome. What do you want to do better? Do you want to stick with that same concept? Yeah. Say them again. What's coming up for you? change your environment is what I'm hearing. You can change that with music. You can change that with a physical location. Super cool. Let me ask you, how often are you doing that to reach that goal? Which one would be better? Scale of 1 to 10, 10 being you're doing it every single time perfectly, 1 being, oh, I suck, I shouldn't be talking right now. 5. What would make it a 6? a little preparation. Cool. Does anybody here journal? Yeah. What does journaling mean to you? Uh, just writing down information so it can affect people in the future. Beautiful. Who else said they're journaling? Yeah. Uh, it's like writing down my current thoughts. Yeah. And then looking back on them later to see like how I interpreted the situation. Beautiful. One more. Journaling. Uh, I write down two things and thank for every day. Gratitude journal, thank you. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. More than 400 times the neurons fire when we write compared to type, listen, or speak. Writing down good old pencil and paper, pen and paper, is more neurologically active. I encourage you all to journal these three points. It's note taking. Journaling is a fancy word for it. It's writing it down. That's it. It's writing it down. But it has so much impact on our thoughts and behaviors. Our patterns of our thoughts drive our patterns of behavior. Want to get better at that? Do you want to get your five to a six? Seriously, get a notebook, get a piece of scrap paper. Buy one of those beautiful fancy journals. That's cool. Right? Write those three down. I'll make sure everybody has this or we'll get the... We'll get the slide deck to you all so you can have it later. I guess there's a recording too. I don't know if or where that's going to be shared. I respect you don't have your notebooks with you right now, but I want to take you through this exercise, take you through this idea. One way to make it move in the future. That was your idea, right? No. Who said that? You said that. You said that. Someone said that over here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, one way to make it move in the future. Any more questions on values before? I want to spend a little time on energy with you. Questions, comments, thoughts about values? Yes? Um, so, I'm assuming that most of our values like, come from our parents or like, how we were raised or like, that kind of stuff. But do they change? Like, is it common for your values to change a lot as you grow? I love that question. There was a book written in 1990 by, um, oh, the other thing you can't trust me is authors. Right? Timelines and authors. I'm not good at it. Uh, good to great, Jim Collins. Good to great. He suggested at that point on some research that values are like carved in stone, they never change. He's been proven wrong since, and he retracted some of that research. They absolutely can shift. Typically takes a very significant life event for our values to change. So they're not going to change willy-nilly, they're not going to change super easy. A significant life, so that might be the loss of someone really important to us. A uh, major promotion or major setback in our career it might be a marriage, it might be the birth of a baby, or something like that. Something big happens in our life, our values could shift. 
Typically not too far and not a lot. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Similar to personality. I mean, you just go back 20 years, look at the research on personality disorders and personality research, and it was suggested that it really doesn't change with your hardwired conditioning, formative years, right? Zero to six years old, most important. A lot of that's being debunked right now in research, which is really cool. We can actually shift those patterns of thought, patterns of behavior, even in the presence of some pathology, even in the presence of some mental health challenges which is wonderful for the world of therapy in that space. It's really good news to get rid of those catabolic ideas that you're stuck, you're wired one way and that's it. Right? That's actually kind of catabolic. <laughs> you can't do anything to change what you're gonna do, what you're gonna do. It's actually kind of catabolic. I want to shift, if there's other questions, please keep them coming. I want to shift into this idea of energy. We talked about these two types of energy, catabolic and anabolic. Quick review, anabolic, Building up, let's stay away from good. I appreciate that because we're still in the positive negative space, right? It's, it's hard, I do it too, I do it too, right? But it's really challenging to shift that, reframe that. Because the same exact type of energy can be both good or bad. All right, catabolic draining, anabolic building. Let's think, let me think about it that way. All right, this chart, you can't read it, it's really complex. I put it up there so you'd be impressed with the research that's behind all of this, right? It's really strong research. I'm a master practitioner in energy leadership. There's an, um, I know that sounds like a big deal, it's not. <laughs> There's a, an assessment that I can actually measure your energetic presence and your energetic thoughts about yourself and situations. It's held up with about 50 years of research. What's most important is these seven levels of energy I'm gonna share with you. The first level of energy is the most catabolic and it's the victim energy. It's apathy, right? It's, I can't win. Why bother? Is that positive or negative? Stop, I asked you guys not to think positive or negative. Don't answer my questions. <laughs> it's not negative. Who here could give me an anabolic, or if it helps you, positive reason to be a victim? Yes, there's a huge opportunity in victimhood if we're, uh, if we're willing to move our energy. We're going to talk about that. What else? I definitely disagree that there's not positive and negative energy. Yeah, let me hear it. Yeah. Would you find, could you find a positive reason to be suicidal? Um, that gets highly philosophical, right? That gets highly philosophical. Uh, if you're asking me personally, I don't subscribe to that activity being selfish, but I certainly don't want to see anyone do it, right? It's very catabolic, but there could be an opportunity to move from that and learn from that, if willing, right? Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's, it's really good. Yeah. Going back to what you were saying before, like, maybe, so you, like, if you do have, like, if you do, if you have someone in your life that, you know, made you a victim, maybe like teaching your, someone else not to do that. We can break the cycle. Often. Often. No absolutes, guys. No absolutes. I totally respect this. The place of pathology, the place of depression, high levels of anxiety. Absolutely. Suicidal tendencies. I totally respect that space. But we could have the opportunity in that space. Yes, sir. I have an example for the lethargy. Yeah. Um, and rest. Yes. So, when someone passes away in the community, and the community comes around and cares for that family, the idea is so they can rest, right? So they can rest. So they can then move their energy to a higher level. Second level, still catabolic, but more energized, we say, is the conflict, anger, defiance space. Right? If level one says something like, oh man, like this, like I'm gonna live life with the effect of the outside world, this sucks, everything's happening to me, I can't win. Level two says, I'm not gonna take that. I'm, I'm really angry here. It's more energized. Still catabolic because it's draining. Still catabolic because it's draining. Does anyone know what the word livid means? 
Yeah, it was limited. Uh, very, very angry. And it was angry. Yeah. I just don't want to be around no one not being angry. If I ask you to think of the word living and associate with the word just what it sounds like with an organ in our body, where do you go? Liver. So an absolute correlation to liver dysfunction with people that live in a high level of anger and frustration. It's literally living. Right, so this catabolic stuff has an effect not only in our social lives, our emotional intelligence, but our physical being. If that's not enough reason to shift, it right, could be challenging, I get it. Level three. <clears throat> this is the one, yes? How is it, if catabolic is breaking it down, how is more catabolic an increased energy? Isn't that how negatives work? I'm sorry? So if catabolic is breaking it down, yeah. and you said we added more catabolic. No, 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 we added more energy. I didn't say it's more energized. We're actually going more anabolic now. So I'm sorry if I wasn't clear about that. So as we go to, through the levels, we're shifting from catabolic to anabolic. Does that make sense? Yes, it's not makes sense. I'm sorry. Sorry I wasn't clear there. Thank you. No, thanks for catching me. Thank you. Level three, more anabolic is the responsibility, forgiveness, and cooperation. Right? This one is now anabolic. This one's now anabolic. Now we're building things, right? You can see it in, in uh, taking responsibility for things, having forgiveness, having cooperation. Level four, concern, compassion, and service. All right, concern for others, we have compassion. Does anyone know the root of the word compassion? Yes, passion is in there, beautiful, right? So the C-O-M in Latin means with, passion means pain. Compassion means pain. Compassion is the ability to sit with someone while they're in pain. The English language is kind of messed up that, that <laughs> word to make it really pretty and beautiful. It's really the ability to sit with someone while they're not so well. That's compassion. That's incredibly building when we can do that with before someone else. Right? It's of service to others. It's of concern to others. <clears throat> Level five is reconciliation, peace, and acceptance. Level six, synthesis, joy, and wisdom. Someone add creativity there. And level seven is non-judgment. An absolute passion in the sense of how we use it in English, where we're just so involved in something that we love it. And creation. <coughs> the list goes, and I'm sorry I wasn't clear earlier, the list goes from catabolic to becoming more anabolic. Level seven is the most anabolic. When we're in a situation, I want you to be able to apply this. I want you to be able to think about how this could be in real application in your life. Does anyone ever get angry here? Yeah. Frustrated, angry, right? Shifting our energy up through the levels. Level three could look like some self-talk around what do I want to be responsible for? You're going to have some time to be angry and frustrated. Absolutely. I'm totally entitled to that. To step it up, we can start asking ourselves better questions. What would I like to do to take some responsibility here? Do I need to forgive myself or someone else in this situation? All right, we can look at these, these as questions for ourselves. Do I get higher? What can I do of service? Because anger is really great if we steer it by. It can also be incredibly destructive. That's my point between the positive and negative. Same energy. Anger can be quite positive if we're willing to steer it in a productive place. If it's what energizes me to take a stand for what I think is right in a more compassionate way than just being the petulant brat in the corner, kicking and screaming and crying about it. Same energy, folks. <clears throat> Different behavior by shifting it to be thinking catabolic or anabolic. Does that make sense? Questions, thoughts? How are we doing on time? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question. Going back to when you were saying you got to set yourself up for uh, success, yeah. um, how exactly did you set yourself up for success? Yeah, I love it. 
Another great book to mention here, um, Atomic Habits, James Clear. Anyone read it? Yeah? I love what he said about winners and losers both have goals. All right, here's the analogy. I don't know anything about racing. It was Formula One racing, 20 teams. All I know is what I read in the book. 20 teams, allegedly the best drivers in the world, right? Sorry, ladies, they're all mad at this point. That stupid sucks. But, right? The 20 best guys in the world who can drive are the best. All 20 of those teams, all 20 of those drivers have the same exact goal. What is it? To win the championship. How many of them win the championship? You get one. They all have the same goal. What differentiates the champion to the other 19 are their success systems. What they put in place. The goal is inadequate. The goal is important because we have to know what we're getting to. But it's inadequate to reach it. I believe you know what your success systems are. Where do you get support in your life? Parents. Parents. Family. Where else? School. School. Where else? Friends. Friends. Where else? Girlfriends? Yeah. Awesome. Where else? Yourself. We can shift some self-perspective and self-thinking here. Yeah. Awesome. I know that's a, like a 50,000 foot view answer to your question, but I think we can get down lower to say, What's the specific context I'm thinking about? What do I want to get better at? What do I want to be more successful for? Like, I love this young man's example of if he changes the environment for his studies, he knows he does better. I asked him how to do it a little bit better, and he came up with his own idea on, I heard, preparing for it. He's willing to go do it. Thinking is one thing, doing it is another, right? He's willing to go do it, that's part of his success system. One, one small but important example for this young does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, awesome. Great question. Yeah, absolutely. Other questions? Yes? It's all for good enough up there. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, do you have thoughts about, like, if, like, um, if, like, someone, you know, hurt you in a really bad way, um, whether or not, like, you're obligated to forgive them at one point, or if that's something you decide. Obligated <laughs> is, the, is the key word there? Yeah, I don't know. You're asking my thoughts, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think you're obligated. I think we have every right to stay in conflict or anger. We have every right to stay in frustration as long as we need to. Absolutely. I'd like to think we all have the potential, though, to shift to a higher shell in our energy to get more anabolic. What I know about human development is obligation and compliance is one way. When we get to choose what we do, we pay attention to that intention of choice and reflect on it, we move it. So I keyed in on obligation. I don't think you're obligated. Do you want to? Then don't, then don't do it. It's about being ready. Right? It's about really being ready. It's about wanting that space and being ready. Great question. Vulnerable question. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Other questions? Other thoughts? my strategic pause. <laughs> Alright, what blocks us? I'm going to go past this. We're all leaders. We get it. What blocks us? <clears throat> Limiting beliefs. Ah, I can't do it. Or I don't know how to do it. Or that says limiting beliefs and I block. Sorry, it's hard to read here. <laughs> Some belief we hold that is disempowering. One of my biggest limiting beliefs is that I'm going to get rejected. So if I totally subscribe to that, how the heck am I going to do something like I'm doing right now with you? How many folks are in this room right now? 150, 200? I don't know. I, I can't count. <coughs> Go with 200? There are 200 opportunities of rejection in this room right now. <laughs> and if I really dwell on that, guys, now I'm going to play it small. I'm not going to share what I know. 
That is my number one living belief. They're going to reject me. I'm going to show my age. Any Adam Sandler fans in here? Yeah, <laughs> go, go. Do you remember the skit he did on Saturday Night Live of the overbearing mother? No, they're all going to laugh at you. Do you guys know that one? Like, that is the ultimate rejection thing. That's what's in my head. The overbearing mother in Adam Sandler's voice of, no, they're all going to laugh at you. Don't do it. Right? It was the overprotective mom he was making fun of her. That's the voice I have in my head. That's my living belief. Get in touch with what yours is. It's something that's saying, psychologists call it your inner critic. It's filtered through your negative bias. We call it a limiting belief. To take it kind of out of the clinical world and into the coaching world. It's something that's saying, stay small, stay safe. <laughs> Get in touch with what yours is and challenge it occasionally. Challenge it. Interpretations. So we're always a choice, we're always analyzing. Our brains are really good at rationalizing. Actually, it prefers to. Prefrontal cortex activity. We're so advanced, we're so brilliant. We love rationalization. So we're always interpreting. What are they thinking? What do they know? Right? Where are your interpretations not serving? If I come into an interpretation and think, oh, every time I go to talk to my boss about a raise, he shoots me down. I'm not going to go in there again because I'm going to just interpret that this next time is the same as last time. If I ask mom for the keys to the car again, she's going to say no. How am I going to influence her differently this time? What's in it for all of us? What does my mom really want in that situation? Probably keep me safe, probably keep the car safe. <laughs> right? We've got to unravel it. We've got to be willing to unpack it a little bit. Think about those interpretations. <clears throat> assumptions. This is where prejudice lives. This is an icky place. We make assumptions. Because it happened that way last time, it'll happen again this time. That's <clears throat> similar to the two examples I just gave you. Or we go even worse. Well, that kind of person acts that way, believes that, or behaves that way. It's an amazing book uh, by Jonathan Haidt. It's called The Righteous Mind. And he makes the point that we are all correct in our own minds. Nobody's going around thinking, you know, I'm going to do wrong today, unless we're really, really pathological over here with um, some significant challenges. But the most of us are going around thinking we're right, <coughs> yet we find disagreement and conflict all the time, don't we? Yeah. His key to stopping those assumptions is empathy. You've heard that word before. What does empathy mean? Okay. The ability to relate to another person. Beautiful. Relate, understand. Mm -hmm. At least a willingness. A willingness to and then the ability to. I love that. All right, so what if we lean in a little bit to understand the other instead of just holding on to what we know is right? doesn't mean we have to abandon what we know is right. Hold on to that. What if we lean in to understand? Everything. Challenges are assumptions. Why am I covering these? These are the blocks to our energy of getting to that next shell up if you want to move. We talked a little bit about the inner critic. I, I mentioned mine, right? That inner dialogue. Very disempowering. But important, whether you believe in creation or evolution, the inner critic is there to keep you safe. Imagine our predecessors, like way back in the wilderness, and they walked up to this huge fuzzy creature with fangs and claws, already you know it's dangerous, but imagine they didn't have the negative bias in their head saying, beware. And they went up to it like, oh, how cute, right? They'd be devoured, and you wouldn't be here today, right? Their genes would not move forward. The inner critic is there to keep us safe, but it often gets in the driver's seat. It often allows itself to make your decisions for you. What we're suggesting here is get in touch with what that inner critic is saying, and get more empowered. Empower yourself to challenge that inner critic. Does anybody know what their inner critic is saying? It's usually something like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not strong enough, they're not going to like you. Yeah. Why does that like stop saying stupid words? Yeah. yeah. They're not going to understand. Yes. Yeah. And so understandably, that could cause you to play a little smaller. Play a little safer. Right? Yeah. So an empowering 
self-talk there might be, wait, I have something intelligent to say. I'm going to share. 90,000 thoughts a day. I can't do math. 90% of those are reoccurring. That means that most of what we thought about yesterday, we're going to think about them today. <laughs> right? And 97% of them are filtered through the negative bias. This is what the research shows. I think having conversations like this can get those numbers lower. So we're not operate, operating out of our limitations, but truly operating out of our potential. Questions, comments, thoughts? There's some hands up. Thank you. I feel like your statement on inner critic is meant to kind of put it down, but I feel like it can be an important thing, especially when you're looking for self-improvement. Yeah, it's absolutely important. I, I don't want you to kill it. I don't want you to even kick it out of the car if I use the analogy that it gets in the driver's seat. It doesn't belong in your lap with its hands on the steering wheel, is my point. Invite it to the passenger seat and let it get co-pilot. Right? You're, you're the pilot. You're the driver. And the way we do that is getting aware of what it is, inviting it to be over here, but making our own decisions. Totally agree with you. I don't want you to kill it. I don't want you to kick it out of the car. It is important. It is still serving us. I, saw, I thought there was a hand going on. Were there others? I thought I saw another hand. Yes? Do you always have like a mantra that you try to focus on? Oh, that's an awesome question. Um, I do a word of the year, actually. So I focus, I, I have this process. The book is called One Word. It's really thin, quick, and easy to read. It takes you through a process to choose a word that you'll focus on for that whole year. And so that's what I do in that space. Um, last year was authenticity for me. This year is actually time. My relationship with time is not what I want it to be, so I want to improve it. So time is intentionally and purposely on my mind with that word. Um, actually, I have a little plaque that says time on my desk, so I have a reminder, right? Part of my success system. It's like, what can you put in your environment, right? Change your environment. Love that idea. To support your intentions. Yeah. How do you make your word? So the little book takes you through a process. It has a series of questions that helps you, um, kind of like a funnel, helps you identify lots of words that might be interesting to you at that point. And then as you go through the process, it really kind of filters down into um, much fewer choices and possibly will like, show the one for you. Yeah. Okay, good question. Yes? Do you get like a new word every New Year's? Every year? Like, like every, on New Year's you get you find new words. Yeah, that's the idea, but my relationship with time, I'm sometimes late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so maybe next year I can answer that better for you, that I'll do it on time. <laughs> but that's the idea, every cycle. You don't have to do it in New Year's, you can start at any time you want. You can choose today, you can choose June 30th, it doesn't matter. The idea is to have some cycle of awareness Right? Some cycle of awareness in your life. Other questions before we wrap up today? Yeah. Um, so it seems like what you've been saying is we're supposed to be like continuously building, and uh, we, might, we might not reach that perfect person that we want to be, but we all have bad uh, you know, days, weeks, months, even years. So what should our thought process be um, when those of you are happy with our level and moving out with them? No, I love it. I love it. So, um, <coughs> I was gonna, we have just a few minutes together, actually. So we talked about um, some of these earlier on. I think it's giving ourselves some grace in each of these spaces. Right, when things are low, when we're not performing well. What if we give ourselves a little grace in that space? Permission to rest, I heard earlier. Recharge somehow. What do you like to do to recharge? Sleep, nothing. Those are legit. What else? Recharging. Yeah, yeah, there might be some close friends or something that you get a little bit energy from. What else? Recharging. Yeah. The young lady. Oh, uh, listening to music. Yeah, yeah. What else? You, sir? She took my hand. She took your hand. <laughs> awesome. She read your mind. She's so close to you right there. 
I know my number one value being creativity. I need time to create. I'm a fly fisherman, I time on flies. My fly desk is right next to my work desk. I have a crappy meeting. I build 15 minutes in between every single one of my meetings, no matter what, sometimes a little bit more. I'll go to the fly desk, tie a fly, I'm re-energized, I do something creative. I'm a woodworker, I get to spend two hours on the weekend woodworking. I'm a better father, I'm a better husband, I'm a better neighbor, for that two hours in my shop. Know yourself and lean into the things that energize you or re-energize you. So first, give yourself some grace. I think all too often we're beating ourselves up a little too much. Second, what do you want to do to recharge? You learn to play tennis. That'd be fun. Yeah. So, with everything that's been said today, what do you think is like the one big idea that we should take out? Oh, so it's really personalized. I think. I hope. I hope I gave you a bunch of stuff to take out. Um, I think if I. So my my one partner uh, is is actually always asking me that question. I love it. She she says net it out. Like if you took a net and you scooped into today, what would you want back in that? What would you want in that net to net it out? Um, I would want you to have a really strong self-sensibility, strong level of self-awareness in what makes you authentically and uniquely you, and to know that those are your keys. Leverage those in everything you do. Share a model of values, one way to look at it. Share a model of energy, another way to look at it. But the bottom line, what I would net out, I'd love that question, thank you is to be highly self-aware of what makes you, you. And keep bringing that. Nobody else can be you, right? That sounds so corny, right? I always say nobody else can be me, nobody wants the job, right? <laughs> nobody else can be you, so be, be you. Thank you for that. Folks, I think we're at the, at the time, I don't want to mess up the schedule. Uh, I so appreciate your participation, your energy today, your time, you're taking out of your busy schedules to be here. I want to just truly thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So we do have VIP sessions available. It's going to be periods five and six through the lunch periods. And uh, Mr. Bertha will be in our library media center for those two periods. So if any of you want a little extra connection, a little more time, uh, he is more and right available for you. So that gives you the opportunity to spend some more time, ask some more questions, and really get, get deeper. So really, once again, thank you, SDF. Thank you, our student leaders. This was wonderful. We hope you took away exactly what he's here for, inspiration. Be the best that you can be, no matter what you do. Be the best, because we all know that's the what way? The way. Right. 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 All right.